When I ask you guys what topic you would like me to cover in my videos, small spaces come up a lot. So in this video, I want to talk about storage in small spaces. And to illustrate my ideas, I will use the 3D model of the most common small space in the world, the studio apartment. And I'm hoping that a lot of you can take some good ideas from this. But even if you don't live in a studio, a lot of the strategies can be implemented in other small spaces too. And the way I want to go about it is to explain three things. Number one, the general strategy for storage in small spaces. Number two, storage for transition spaces. These are the entryways and the corridors. And number three, storage for living spaces like the bedroom and the living room. To help you understand these concepts, I'm going to use both real life examples and a 3D model of the studio apartment. The studio apartment I selected has a corridor, a bathroom, and a sleeping or living area. The size of the studio is about 30 square meters or 322 square feet. As I explain various corners of the apartment, I will turn off some of the walls so you can see better what the room looks like. If you feel a little bit disoriented, always look at the floor. The missing walls are marked with dotted lines. So let's get into it. Let's first talk about the strategy. The best way to understand the strategy is to show you a section through this apartment. If you look at the section of the living room and the corridor, you can see how the spaces are lit. As we get further and further away from the window, the spaces become darker and darker. And in this case, also smaller and smaller. We as humans tend to avoid to linger too long in small and poorly lit spaces or zones of the apartment. And it's precisely these areas that you should cover in big floor to ceiling storage while keeping the well lit areas as free from big storage furniture as possible. As we get closer and closer to the window, the storage should be pushed to the extreme sides of the wall, the floor and the ceiling, allowing for the space to fill as big as possible and for the light to be reflected into the room. So this is the overarching principle, but like every rule, there are also exceptions depending on what the floor plan looks like and what the needs of the inhabitants are. I'm going to get into more examples later on, but first let's talk about transition spaces. Let's head for the corridor or entryway and look at what is possible there. Usually the corridor in studios either has a kitchen, like in this example, or it doesn't have a kitchen, like in this example. The kitchen is attached to the bathroom wall and is facing the living area. Let's look at our storage options when the corridor has a kitchen. If the kitchen is already built in, then you might want to check if there's any space left over on the top of cabinets, so that is usually an opportunity for storage. What one typically sees though are bottles, jars and various packets stored on top of the kitchen cabinet. I would encourage you not to do that, but instead use baskets or boxes. They create a more uniform and less cluttered view of the kitchen. If you have a kitchen in the corridor, the second thing you can do is then add an upper shelf over the entryway door. This will expand your storage in the kitchen. But why stop here? You can do the same with the opposite wall and add another upper shelf storage. Then why not go around the corridor with a third shelf adjacent to the bathroom wall? This will expand your storage space in the kitchen while keeping the movement space below fairly free. Here are some interesting examples of entryway storage above the head. You can create a niche right over the entryway or over the entire length of the corridor if generally the storage space is tight. You can either DIY the upper part of the cabinets and then paint everything in one uniform color. Or if you own the apartment, investing in taller upper cabinets can help expand your storage space and keep items dust free. And if you have been thinking that it's hard to reach these high spaces, usually a ladder with a few steps helps. I've even seen this cool ladder to chair system that I think would save a lot of space, but there are also ladders you can hang flat from the wall that need very little space. Now let's look at what is possible to do on the corridor when there is no kitchen. And here I want to explore our options with corridors of different widths. My corridor has a width of 170 centimeters or 5.57 feet. I have 20 centimeters to the left or 0.65 feet, a clearance of 90 centimeters in the middle or 2.95 feet, and 60 centimeters to the right or 2.26 feet. You want to keep the clearance as wide as the door through the corridor due to fire safety regulations. 
In case of a fire emergency, you do not want to have your exit blocked with any items. You want to be able to exit your apartment as quickly as possible. So this is why you should keep this space free. Based on how much space you have on each side of the clearance, you can decide what type of storage furniture you want to have. If you have 60 centimeters or more, you can add a normal wardrobe. You should absolutely go from wall to wall and from floor to ceiling. If you have anything between 60 and 42 centimeters, you can have wardrobes without doors if the clothes hang normally or with doors if the clothes are facing the opposite direction. For example, the Plata system at IKEA offers solutions that are 42 centimeters wide. Between 42 and 17 centimeters, you have open storage units, basically any kind of shelves or doorless systems. And if you have anything below 17 centimeters, you can use a pegboard. Pegboards are great because they allow you to hang a lot of items even though they do not occupy a lot of space and they are very versatile. And of course you can apply the same principle to the other side of the corridor too. There are some additional 20 centimeters between the corridor entryway and the bathroom wall. This is not a lot, but it's enough for some shelves and some very narrow shoe cabinets. Here's how the space could look like in my 3D model. And here are some real life examples. Even though there are only about 20 centimeters available, you can still add many shelves to store more jars and kitchen utensils. Now that we have covered the corridor walls entirely, which you should do by the way, let's look at other storage opportunities. Living spaces. Now ideally you have used your transition spaces to the maximum and don't need that much more storage in the living spaces. But should that not be the case, Let's look at how we might be able to add storage strategically. Here too, we want to use the same general strategy we have used for the entire apartment. You stack storage starting with the darkest corners of the room and moving towards the front to storage below and above the window edges. This means that floor to ceiling storage should be on the further side of the room, either right next to the corridor or adjacent to the bathroom wall or both, depending on where the rest of the furniture is. We also said that this could be the wall for an open kitchen. Now, what do we do if we need even more storage? Well, you could continue the floor to ceiling wardrobes along the wall, but that would also make the space a lot narrower. This is why I encourage you to start stacking the corridor at the back to keep this area feeling as big as possible. Now, luckily we can still add storage, but we need to trick the eye a little bit. And the way we want to do that is we avoid storage at eye level and we push it to the extremes of the wall, either to the top or the bottom. Bottom storage is often low level sitting furniture. This can be upholstered benches or beds with storage underneath. While they allow for a lot of storage, they also make the space feel as big as possible. So here are some real life examples. You can have a bench with removable upholstery where you can store various items. Especially in Asia, you will see these raised floor situations with storage underneath over which a sleeping mat is laid out. During the day, the sleeping mat is removed and what is left are these tatami mats that can be used for sitting more flexibly during the day. Sometimes they also act as chairs for the adjacent table. A slightly different sleeping culture can have a different attitude towards the sleeping area, which is also used during the day. Upper storage are often shelves and cabinets placed above the eye level. For example, here I can add shelves along the walls of my living space. They keep clutter away from the eye level and provide additional storage in the room. If they're placed over the bed or the couch area, they can be reached without a ladder just by standing up on the bed or the couch, but at the same time not blocking the view and not reducing the comfort felt in the space. Oh, and by the way, if you want to learn more on the topic of small spaces, I have an entire class called Interior Design for Small Apartments, where I discuss in more details various aspects of small spaces like compactness, flexibility, partitions, optical illusions, and so much more. You'll find the class both on Skillshare and Udemy. If you happen to sign up to Skillshare, you will be accessing not just this class, but all my 21 classes. So make sure to check it out you can find all the links in the description. Finally, I just want to add some furniture to make this space look like a real home. And here's what it could look like.
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.